All right, good morning. Welcome back. House Democrats ramping up the fight with the White House subpoenaing the ambassador to the EU. Yeah, this comes just hours after he was blocked from testifying in what the president called an illegitimate probe. Former DOJ official Hans von Spakovsky joins us now to react. Good to have you here, sir. Um, so Nancy Pelosi won't call this vote uh, to on the impeachment inquiry. So now we basically right. have a standoff at this point, right? Yeah, we, we do. And you know, what's interesting about that is that she's breaking historical precedent. Uh, look, there isn't anything more serious other than declaring war that the House of Representatives can do other than starting an impeachment inquiry, because what are they doing? They're starting an inquiry, the result of which could be to uh, remove a duly elected president and overturn the choice of the American people. In the past, with Bill Clinton, Richard Nixon, the entire House voted on whether to start that kind of investigation. That's clearly the way this should be done. Every member of the House should be on record for the voters as to whether or not they believe this is justified. Hans, let's take a look at a couple statements here. The first one is the House Committee Chair subpoena Sondland, and this says, quote, in light of Secretary Pompeo's direct intervention to block your appearance before our committees, we are left with no choice but to compel your appearance at a deposition pursuant to the enclosed subpoena. The White House then goes on to say, quote, in order to fulfill his duties to the American people, the Constitution, the executive branch, and all future occupants of the office of the presidency, President Trump and his administration cannot participate in your part an unconstitutional inquiry under these circumstances. Now, Hans, I, I guess one of the questions that people ask is, if the White House and the president has nothing to hide, then why not just let Sondland go up there and talk? Well, because what the House is doing is trying to interfere in the president's conduct of foreign policy, including his discussions and negotiations with foreign leaders. The Constitution gives the president very broad powers in this area. And if Congress, mm. uh, if everything the president does in the foreign policy area can be instantly disclosed to Congress, it's going to be impossible for any president to conduct uh, foreign policy. And the president has, you know, the constitutionally recognized doctrine of executive privilege. He can protect all of the communications uh, and advice from that he receives from senior diplomats and his closest advisors with this thing hans being so uh you know politically divided i mean pretty much right on right. party lines and the senate being in republicans favor i mean the democrats must know that they're probably not going to get president trump out of office it just seems like this is purely politically motivated almost like just a, as a way to harm the president to make his job harder to do yeah, it's looking that way, particularly because they want, won't hold a vote. And look, uh, the, the transcript of the phone call that started all this between Trump and uh, the Ukrainian president, there's no violation of any federal law in, in that phone call. So, so far, they really don't have any evidence that the, the president somehow broke the law or engaged in serious misconduct. That's what impeachment is for. It is not mm. to be used as a partisan tool. And you have an op-ed out right now that's, that's talking about this and the fact that right. Nancy Pelosi hasn't started the process yet. So you say she needs to give up or do it. Yeah, I, I really think that uh, they're doing a disservice to the republic and to the American people if they don't go through the formal process of holding a vote. Why? Look, the power of impeachment is given to the House of Representatives, not to the Speaker of the House. So you need the entire House authorizing this, or a lot of people, besides the President, are going to raise questions about the legitimacy of starting this kind of an what inquiry. Do you, what, what do you think happens if she does call the vote? What if she just says, okay, fine, let's call the vote. Uh, it, it probably does pass. I think they can lose like 19. The Democrats could lose 19 and still get right. uh, an, an impeachment or at least the inquiry started. Uh, will that change anything about the process? Do you think the White House will say, okay, fine. Uh, you know, all these people can testify and we're going to give you the documents. Well, that may not necessarily happen, but here's the other thing. Uh, without a vote, we don't know the rules under which this uh, impeachment inquiry is going to be conducted. Again, if you look at the resolutions, uh, for example, for Bill Clinton, it set out the uh, rules regarding, well, how would the ranking members of the minority party be able to participate? Can they call subpoenas too? Can they object to subpoenas? Mm -hmm. Can they examine witnesses? We don't know any of that because there's been no vote. And the, the Republicans feel blocked out at this point, right? Because of that's that. right. Yeah. Okay. Hans, right. Thanks for your time. Sure. Thanks for having me. All right.